This is the fifth time I've tried recording this video, but let me try to make this one good. 600 subscribers. That's a fucking lot. <laughs> that is a, a lot of people, man. And I know it's not where we said we wanted to be. We try to aim for monetization by summer. That wasn't a whole thing of, I need to start getting paid for this. That's not what that was. That was really just because three years ago, when I started the original channel, the only thing I had on my mind was numbers. Of course, the, the original core explanation for YouTube does originate back in my, like, you know, younger, younger, younger days when I was like eight years old. Of course, that's where the love originated because when I had very few people who gave a shit as a kid, there was always those people who didn't know who I was, but somehow it felt like they gave more of a shit. That's where that core love for YouTube originated. Then I turned 14, my balls dropped. I decided, you know what? People might watch my videos. They might not think I'm some annoying ass kid, which I don't know why I, th I had came to that conclusion, but hey, it's me. <laughs> so I started making videos and then some shit happened. I'm not gonna go in depth. Um, let's just say it was some stereotypical teenage bullshit, high school drama bullshit on top of family bullshit. There was just a lot that happened at the beginning of the channel. Cause it started off as like this loving, you know, I'm gonna chase this dream. I'm gonna do it for me. I'm gonna do it for all those kids out there that were like me. Then I broke. I went through some stereotypical bullshit, family, high school drama. I lost my, my dog as, as fucked up as that sounds. Like as stupid as that sounds like, really? Really, that put you through depression? Yeah, I lost my best friend in like nine years. That mixed on top of, you know what, fuck it. I'll, I'll just, I'll expound my, my bullshit, all right? I lost my, my best friend in like nine years. Her name was Cookies, it was my favorite fucking dog, man. I didn't have many friends growing up. I had Doug, Chris, and another one who I don't talk to anymore. And then I had this dog, I had this fucking dog. Her name was Cookies, it was mixed Maltese, Yorkie. Loved her to death and I lost her. Growing up, I was very trusting. I was a very loving person. That's how my mom raised me to be. And that's something that I am very grateful for. And I felt like I took for granted back then, especially with the way my mom taught me these things. I got cheated on by this girl. I was kind of treated, I was kind of outcasted from my family at the time, mainly because my views didn't align with theirs and they didn't really see the way I, th I saw and they kind of disgraced me for it. They outcasted me for it. And I kind of felt like I didn't really have any place to go. I felt like I could even like listen to my own mom, talk to my own mother because I felt so outcasted during all of this. And this is where the breaking quote unquote point started. And it sounds so stupid. I know it's, it's bullshit, but let me expound. All right. This is, <laughs> it was from here that 2020 point where I decided that YouTube wasn't just my passion anymore. It was my revenge plan. <laughs> it was essentially a revenge plan. That's what it was. It was just really long-term revenge. That's, that's how I saw it. I decided that I was going to put everything into this because if I made it on this, then I could prove them wrong, right? Like they were, they were outcasting me. They were betraying me. They were all of this shit. Like I felt like people didn't like me because they thought I was useless. They thought I was worthless. They thought I was a disappointment. I wanted this to be a big fuck you to the people that wronged me, I guess. And then a big kind of fuck you, but are you proud of me now? To the people I loved, but I felt like I was outcasted from because they thought I was a disappointment. They thought I was useless. That's what this was. I really wanted to make it big just to prove a point, I guess. And for two years, that's how I continued. I found myself in this pit. I was growing my hair out. I wasn't taking care of myself. You can see it in my old videos, dude. I did not look okay. <laughs> my hair grew out. I got out of shape for a while. Like I'm sure there's like a period of time where you can literally see like, I've never noticed it before, but I went back and go watch some old videos and like my face is like a lot chunkier. And I was like, damn, I let myself go for a while. I really did. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying for me, it was like really off-putting. But but during this time period, this two-year time period, I really just kind of been running off of pure rage and agony and, you know, fuck you energy. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to all of it. So much that I, I really lost the passion for YouTube, creating things, for being Nate MG. I was, all of this was just a facade, it felt like. Like, honestly, I really, I think I really was. Because if you go back and watch those old videos, you don't see me you see just a completely different dude. I wasn't being honest. I was, you know, putting on a show, I guess, a fake show for the camera. I, was, I wasn't me. I met some people online that were my, my friends. And at this point, I had been still so rage-driven, but alone in terms of content creation, because I had some friends that were streaming and stuff, but they all quit on me. So that kind of added to the pressure of, okay, now you gotta make it for them. You gotta show them it was possible, because they quit, because they, they didn't see a future for themselves in it. Like, it happens, but 
I had to do it for them now. Like that was just another thing added on. And then after all of this being alone, after all of this, you know, trudging through the content, whatever alone, I don't know what bullshit I was on. I met some people online who had the same passion as me. They all wanted to stream. They all wanted to do YouTube. They were so excited about it. I felt like I had found some people that understood. When I met these people, it really like that's when the passion, like it felt like it reignited for a second, right? Like making dumb shit with them, making fun shit. It wasn't just for the views. It wasn't for a scheduled upload or anything. It was just, this is, I can make some fun shit. Like, this is cool. I, why did, why wasn't I doing this before? Cause I was just pushing out shit that I thought would hit the algorithm. I was just doing it because I was doing it. But they really taught me that it was more than that. From there, I kind of, you know, our friendship got a lot deeper and I'm very close friends with them now. That's when it felt like it kind of, that spark reignited. I call that like the first the first quote unquote awakening because I, I cut, that was when I had like my bleached hair. I cut that. I fucking dyed it back to black. I, I started playing games that were like nostalgic to me. So like five nights at Freddy's, the joy of creation, shit like that. There's a certain era of my YouTube channel where you can literally see like, I, like it felt like a fire, like we reawakened. Right. I, I, that, that went on for a little bit. That went on for a while. That was the end of 2021. I felt happy. I felt like good about what I was doing. Then I went into 2022 um some more bullshit at school some more family drama but at this point i had already been to therapy i'd already been to counseling my mom started to understand a little bit more and it was a lot more my relationship with my family got better that's 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 the best way to say it i don't mean to go like too into detail too personal of course i don't mean to say shit that i'm not supposed to be saying but yeah i went into 2022 with some pretty high spirits because you know new year all of that shit i was excited i was like oh this is it this is this is it. I felt that fire come back. This is my passion. This is what I want to do with my life. And then I got a big shout out from a YouTube channel called Too Sharp. And this, a lot of people think that I'm not grateful for it. It was such a cool experience, but it really did not align with what I wanted for my channel because overnight I blew up. I went from 200 subscribers to with like 4,000 within a month. It was insane. And I, I took it with grace at first. I was like, this is it. This was my moment. It was like, I, I genuinely had like a, you know, divine intervention thing of like, at the second I found out that this was my passion again, the second I started being passionate about it, that's when the big shit hit. Cause at this point I'd been working for, at it for like a year and a half and with little to no growth. So whenever I, I like, I felt the passion, it really did feel like a divine intervention of you're passionate again. Here's your subscribers. Like <laughs> that's what it felt like. And maybe six months later I tried carrying on the channel and my videos were not getting pushed out there and the videos that I were getting views they were getting views it was just my watch duration was so shit that YouTube would declare it to be just a bad video because it was getting pushed to so many people who just didn't give a fuck anymore they just kind of subscribed because it was a shout out and on top of that it just felt like I wasn't I didn't earn any of that, right? Like at this, yes, I've been working at it for a year and a half, but all of those people came from this dude who just, I just happened to be in his video. Oh, well, it was just really strange situation of luck. From there, I I tried moving on. I tried pushing forward with the, you know, the shit I wanted to make. And I realized that the shit I wanted to make was not doing well. It was kind of hindering on my health again. And I felt myself going back in that mindset of, numbers matter numbers matter numbers matter numbers matter and on top of this my friend of a long time stopped talking to me for a while and in fact i she stopped talking to me in general so it just hurt <laughs> i felt kind of lost again towards the beginning of 2022 there was this moment and at the end of my main channel when i did reading your comments three where i realized that this i didn't feel happy with what i was making i was losing more subscribers than i was earning and getting earning god my videos weren't getting pushed i just felt like i was fighting a losing battle and there was literally no hope. So I took the cards that was dealt to me and I fucking threw them out. I made new, I made a new deck. <laughs> By this point, my hair had already grown out to its full kind of length. I'd been friends with these guys for a while and I really started to appreciate my family a little bit more. I really started to appreciate art a lot more. This is when I started picking up guitar. And nine months ago, I restarted the channel. I released a video called Let's Talk where I announced the new channel and from 4,200 people, about 60 people came over. That was a lot more than I thought was gonna come over. Cause like you put that into perspective, 60 people, that fills up a small ass room, but damn. <laughs> and it was kind of like a awakening experience of, not all these people gave a shit, but these guys gave a shit. Why did y'all give a shit? So I really started kind of opening my eyes towards the relationship that I could have with my community and being a lot closer with them and 
being me on camera and that's when I restarted the channel for a while on the channel I, I still had the long hair I still carried it on with me I decided that once I once Halloween would have ended which was October 31st and the reason I did this was because I I made a bet with my friends that I would do Aaron Yeager for Halloween because it was a big running joke on the old channel but I released seven days where it was seven days from Halloween and on November 1st I re I released The Rise Begins which is a lot more of important of a video to me than a lot of people realize <clears throat> oh god because this was it felt like I truly restarted at this point because this this video right here, The Rise Begins, this video signified coming full circle. No more anger. My hair got cut off, and with that hair getting cut off, there goes all that agony. There goes all that depression, that desperation, all of that shit that I'd built up so much in the past two years. All of that had disappeared when I cut my hair off. And I was back to square one. And I believe at this point I'd reached like 200 something subscribers, which was exactly what we had at the old channel before we blew up with Too Sharp and shit. And this meant so much because this was full circle. This was it. This was where I was going to take everything by storm and just full send, but not as the same Nate that I was for the past two years. This time, this Nate would have hope, some sort of faith, genuine pride in himself. I was going to be proud of the shit I was going to make, and I was going to spread a message that was going to influence a lot more people. I really started to push Rise Above to the surface a lot more because that meant a lot more to me. Because originally rise above was an expression of rise above the expectations that people have for you because you can you're better you know you can make them feel stupid for wronging you back then you're gonna rise above them you're gonna show them that you could do whatever they said that you couldn't rise above it was made out of hatred anger and now with the new channel i spun it i wanted to turn it into a more positive note don't hold on to anger don't hold on to desperation agony any of that shit. Take what you know now and chase your dreams without the intentions of hurting others. Rise above the expectations that you have for yourself, not other people. They don't matter. Maybe you want to impress some other people, but that don't matter. Rise above is supposed to dignify what your expectations are for yourself and rising above those. Not the expectations that others have for you. The expectations that you have for yourself. Those are the only expectations that you need to rise above. Don't give a shit about what other people think about you. Take what you know, take what you love, take what you want to do in the future and rise above that. You can do it. That's what I wanted to spin it to be. Immediately, two videos later, 5,000 views. Shit, this is it. Like, it, I felt good. And for like a month and a half straight, I did good. I was making videos I was proud of. I was happy with the shit I was making. And I felt a good connection with my community. Shit, people are actually like enjoying this enjoying the message that I have to spread, enjoying the content that I have to create. And that's when some outside bullshit happened. Around the time I released Thank You, like you can see, it, I shaved my face, I shaved my mustache and everything. I went bare bones because I had this whole moment in the middle of the night where I really started to fear failure again. And this is normal, you know, everyone's going to be afraid of failing. That's just how we are as humans. And we're going to have that constant looming fear of, you know, this ain't going to work. I had to build myself back up after that. I couldn't let my fear define me. That's not what this channel was about. In fact, I would have just been a false prophet preaching this fucking rise above shit. And here I am crying in my bed in the middle of the night, shaving my fucking, you know, facial hair out of shame. That wasn't me. That wasn't what I wanted this channel to become. So what did I do? I picked myself back up again. I made shit. I, did, I actually challenged myself at this point to create a bi-daily upload schedule for the entire month of December. And oh my God, I failed miserably. <laughs> I actually made it halfway. I made it halfway and I think it was this video that I stopped. I made it halfway through December with bi-daily uploads and this was while I was still in school. I was working 40 hour work weeks. It was bad and I crashed. I really did. And there was this period of time right here where I just kind of, you know, stuttered. Like it's right, like when a car is about to die, you can kind of feel it like choo, 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 choo. when I hit 400 and I tried putting myself back up. This was me attempting to hold on to the edge of the cliff. I was on my fucking fingers. Like it was just my fingers holding on and I'm trying to pull myself back up. And then I just couldn't anymore. I pushed for eight videos, probably like a month or so. And then I finished the day in the life video and I sat there and I watched it and I was not happy with what I was doing. Sure, that's the grind, yeah, but I'm 17. I'm not paying any bills, thank God. I have a mother that actually supplies me, so call this spoiled as you may. I couldn't have been working 40 hour work weeks for seemingly no reason. I crashed really bad at this point. I just had to take a month. 
I told myself originally, we're going to take a two week break, maybe a week break at most. Two weeks turned into a month, a month turned into a month and a half. And at this point, this project that I've been working on since the dawn of this new channel, all of it started to take form. I released Yin because I thought with releasing Yin, I thought that was my comeback, right? I thought, okay, this is it. This is where I'm going to go. This is where I'm going to come back, you know, even stronger than before. And then some more bullshit happened. <laughs> I got knocked back down. There was a certain priority list. And right now, YouTube or at this moment, YouTube was not at the top. There was other things I had to take care of at the time. And in doing this, I was still working a nine to five. I was still working 40 hour work weeks on top of high school. I was failing my classes. I didn't have friends. I wasn't seeing people. I wasn't having real conversations with people on the daily other than going to work and, you know, hi, how are you? Do good. Did you get your items? OK, yada, yada, bullshit. I didn't have anybody. And yeah, I had my online friends, but there comes a point where you start disassociating. Like these are people, but you've never met them. You've never seen them eye to eye. You don't associate them as real people. It's and as you know, jarring and as fucking brutal as that is to say, like that's what I saw at the time. It was just, I don't have a single person I could go to in real life and talk to, except my friends, Doug and Chris. I talked to Chris. I called him one night and I asked him if we could go talk at a, just talk, go to go someplace in our city. And I, Cause I haven't seen him in a while. This is the first time I'd seen him in a long time. So we did. We went to a park and from for like three hours, I shit you not, we sat there and I just belted out all my shit. I just fucking let my whole thought process out. I, I was scared of myself for a while because I, I, I felt myself diving back into that pit of loneliness and despair. And I could kind of feel that sense of I got to do this to prove everyone wrong again. I felt that coming back. I knew I couldn't let it control me because that's just not what you want out of life. You want balance. You don't want one side of you to take over. You want balance. So after that night, we, you know, said we parted ways. I was so grateful to have talked to him again. I don't know what it was, but I was just so fucking grateful. And I took another month. This time, I wasn't in as bad as a headspace. This time, it was truly just me thinking, learning. I started drawing. I started, you know going more and more into writing. I started, I was writing a lot during this time, by the way. I started kind of appreciating art forms a little bit more. With that, after a certain time, I realized, okay, it's, it's time. I can't keep pushing this off. It's time to come back. I released Rock Bottom. And Rock Bottom was not an intentional video, by the way. That was, that was the oh, like first take of reading your comments. Like I cut out the first five minutes because it's literally just me trying my intro over and over and over again. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't, I truly just felt like I had to get my thoughts out first. I, I don't know what it was, but I just had to talk to the camera again because I hadn't spoken to a camera like this, you know, as Nate MG, as Nate Mendoza. I hadn't, it felt wrong. So I had to, you know, talk about shit. I, I just had to let it out. And that wasn't a clout video, I swear to God. <laughs> but after that, seeing the reception to that something clicked in my brain because all of those comments I, I, I like I'm not going to read them all right here but they were all so in depth about appreciation all of it it was just so many people letting their thoughts out on loneliness and how they related and how this was like a beacon essentially all of it and I don't mean to sound egotistical arrogant whatever it just a lot of people related to this and that was so weird to me like shit i did that? I made something that people could relate to? This was, this was me. This wasn't some big YouTuber. This was me that just brought a bunch of people together to relate. And a lot of the comments were like, you know, this helped me, this inspired me, whatever. And again, not meaning to sound egotistic or arrogant, whatever. It just like something, something flicked. With as small as a community as you call this, you know, it was like 500 at the time. You can call that small, whatever, in terms of great green you know, YouTube scheme. This community, came together this community had an impact made on them all of us not just you guys but me too all of that like flicked the switch i just really haven't felt the same sense immediately i got back on it i made yang released it reading comments three released it everything beyond this point is nothing but proof it's nothing but proof of appreciation it's nothing but proof of persistence pride and faith i love you guys and I'm sure that if you guys can genuinely take anything away from these videos, it's rise above. I want you all to embody that. Rise above that entire message that you can do whatever the fuck you put your mind to. Don't let anybody get in your way. The only person that can stop you is you. No one else, you. It's your mindset. It's your discipline. It's everything that you want to do in life. It all comes back down to you.
not your circumstances, not your environment. Because, yeah, you can have a shitty environment. You can have a terrible environment. But if you really want to escape that and you really want to achieve something better for yourself, it's not about the environment. It's about how you react to it. It's about how you change. You're able to escape that you. Not your environment, not your mom, not your dad, not your brother, not your sister, not your fucking cousin. You. You're able to be better. You're able to achieve whatever the fuck you want to achieve. That's what Rise Above is. Not losing yourself in the process. Not becoming corrupt because of it. Being proud of yourself. Being able to achieve something greater than yourself. That's what Rise Above is. No one can stop you. Only you can stop you. And I fully have faith in every single one of you. I'm a 17-year-old kid from the middle of fucking Texas. And, like, I know that don't sound like a bad spot. It's just nobody knows my city. My city is the definition of, like, buttfuck. It's yellow. It's like tumbleweeds. You know those stereotypes where the do 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 That's my city. I'm barely graduating high school. I don't have a solid career choice in my life other than this. Only reason I'm going to any sort of college is for time. My career path is this. I'll say that with my full chest. I don't mean to rant. I'm sorry. I know I've been recording for 30 minutes, but we can do this. All of us. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your goals are. I don't care if it's just to pass algebra. I don't care if it's to become the next president. If you have a goal, you can achieve it. Nothing is unrealistic. The only unrealistic expectations are what others deem unrealistic. You set whatever fucking hype bar you want for yourself. Chase it. Do not be afraid to take risks. Make sure you're smart in the decision making. But make sure to have faith in yourself. Rise above all of it. This isn't about, you know, proving people wrong anymore. This isn't about anger. This isn't about, you know, desperation to be in a better situation. This is about understanding who you are as a person and being able to self-improve. Be better than what you originally were yesterday. Rising above. There's a lot of meanings to it. And how you interpret it isn't totally up to you. As long as you're able to take whatever the fuck I preach and take whatever the fuck other people's preach, this ain't just my thing. Anyone can say rise above. Anybody. Anybody can take that and embody it and put it into their life and do it in whatever the fuck they want to do. They can put it in whatever priority they want. Rise above. That is so important. Do not be afraid to chase your dreams. Do not be afraid to chase whatever the fucking goal you have. You want to be a YouTuber? Go be a YouTuber. You want to be a fucking rapper? Go be a rapper. You want to go be a fucking musician, a guitarist, and a band that travels overseas? You fucking do that. Or hell, if you want to be an accountant, go be an accountant. You want to be a fucking engineer? Go be an engineer. Nobody is stopping you other than you. Do not take any environmental circumstance, any vi environmental nerf that you know life has just thrown in your way. You can be dealt the shittiest hand in the fucking deck. It's about how you play that hand. Or, hear me out, throw the hand out. You make your future. Nobody else. Nobody. I'm proud of each and every single one of you who ha even had the bravery to dream big. Because right now in the world, that bravery is some of the most unseen shit. Anyone who has the bravery to dream big, I'm proud of you. This shit is tough. This shit is, it'll make you feel alone. You are not alone. That's what this community is. And we're not here to put each other down. We're not here to be better than one another. We're here to push each other's forward. This is about rising above. And we're going to all do it together. I'm sick and tired of seeing people not reach their full potential. I'm sick and tired of seeing people just sit back down when they fail. Rise above, motherfuckers. I am proud of each and every single one of you who had the bravery to dream big. Don't play your cards stupidly. Don't run into battle with nothing but faith on your mind. Be smart. But never lose that sense of bravery. I'm proud of you, motherfuckers. Rise above. And here's to this summer. Adios.